Today we're doing an EMB replacement on a 4-tube fluorescent fixture. For ease of showing, we've taken it out of the ceiling and put it on the table for you today. So normally you would find in the ceiling a ballast with a complete battery attached to that as well. You would completely cut everything out and remove that. You can leave the ballast in place, but you're going to need the position where the existing battery is to put your new EMB driver in. What we've done for the sake of video is we've removed a lot of the cables as we cleaned them up and put them to the side. Uh, also, we've capped off some of the wires, but what you would normally have in your lighting fixture is you're going to have a constant hot and you're going to have a switch circuit. And you have to identify those from the get-go so you don't get juiced at all. You have to plug up. So we have a little scenario here where we will show you that you switched off the light, you're working with the dead light up in the ceiling, so everything is off. You still have a constant feed, and you can test that. You want to identify that one and put a wire nut on it, and for the sake of later hooking it up, just put it to the side. Your switch circuit will be dead. There'll be no current to your switch circuit. And for the sake of safety, we'll turn everything off. So, once you find your location, You'll screw your screw in and you'll hold your EMV driver in place. At that point, you begin to separate your wires. Now, the EMV comes with a test switch which hooks up to your purple and your brown wire, and it's very simple purple, purple, brown to brown. You just tie that in and put that to the side for right now. One side of the fixture, you'll bring your blue wire down, and the other side is your red wire. There are the two, pretty much the two ends of your bolt. You have to identify and isolate a single bulb in your fixture for the EMB driver. So in order to do that, what you might find on the last fixture is you'll have a different color wire that probably hooked up to the old battery. And in most cases, that will be the socket that you're going to use. But in some of the older fixtures, we're finding that there's a jumper. So you will be required to pop off the edges and simply just get a screwdriver in there, kind of twist and lift on the side. Same thing on this side. Twist it, and you go around that little tab there. And when you flip this over, what you're going to find, and we've already taken this off, but what you're going to find is you're going to have a jumper in place because of the way the old battery worked that this jumper was in place and it worked fine and it had a separate isolated wire for the, the uh, emergency light that would come on in a power out scenario. What you need to do is take a narrow device, use, we use a paper clip, and you push your paper clip in here, push your paper clip in, remove that extra wire out of there and you're gonna put the paper clip in on the other side and remove this jumper. This jumper has to be removed from the fixture because it will be hot when the switch circuit comes on. So now you've isolated this one socket and what you do is you take your blue wire that comes with the LED driver and you'll just push this in one of the sides and it'll go in and it'll lock in place. Now you know that this one socket has been isolated for the fixture. Tuck the wires in nice and clean. Be sure not to pinch any of the wires when you put it back in place. That would be a dead short scenario. Flip the tabs in and just press it back in place. It's, it's, fairly, it's fairly simple. When you start to do them, you'll start to whiz right through them. And you'll have to do this for the other side as well. Now the other side is going to have more wires because that's just the way the fluorescent lights are wired. They'll have two yellows coming from one end and most likely two reds and two blues down here. That completes your circuit. Do the same thing. Pop the end cap off. And you'll have to identify, you'll see that these are all individually tabbed out. You'll have to identify the one that you want to isolate for the emergency lamp. And that's this one right here. And what we've done is we pull this one off and for ease of sake, we put a little piece of black tape on it. So we've identified the second wire on the other side. Tuck everything back in place. Please make sure you don't 
pinch any of the wires again and snap it back in place. Now you've isolated the single bulb for the EMV driver. You know which wires are which. You already have the blue one in place and you now have the red one on this side. Now continue on with the wiring. So you have a solid black wire which will go to your common, I'm sorry, which will go to your live circuit all the time, live wire. And you have a black wire with a white stripe that will go to your switch circuit. You have a red wire on this side, which will connect to this end of the bulb and will also be wired in with the white wire, which is the neutral wire coming out of the LED driver. So what you want to do is wire the white wire to the red wire. And what we've done here ahead of time is we have a little jumper in here and I'll explain to, I'll explain to you why we have this jumper in here. It'll be uh, pretty easy to see. So we now have the red wire and the white wire tied together. We're going to tie the red wire and the white wire that are coming from the EMV driver directly to the red wire that's on the other end of the isolated bulb, which would be the emergency light. And we're gonna wire nut all those three together. Please make sure they're twisted together nice and tight. And the nut is on securely so that no wires pull out. Now for ease of wiring, and again, this is, this is a wiring preference. You can see the wires are just starting to jumble up all over the place. You're going to have to tie what would normally be those three wires into the neutral side. And before you do that, you also have to bring in the three other wires for the other bolts, for the other side of the bolts. Right? So they all got to be tied together into the neutral side. You can see, you can start to get a lot of wires. Right now I have five wires here I'm trying to put together. It would have been eight wires if I tried to do it without the jumper. And again, make sure all the wires are tucked in nice and tight. Now what we have left, last but not least, is we save the hot wires. For last, we're going to wire in the white striped black wire to the switch circuit. And the constant line, now remember, this is still hot. So if you're wiring this live, you don't want to touch anything that would ground you out. You can touch both wires while it's live, as long as you're not touching anything else. And we'll knock it shut. Okay. So, so pretty much all of your wiring is done at this point. And, oh, my apologies. You have to bring the other end of the light up to the black wire. So you'll bring your yellow wires in on the opposite end to your switched circuit make sure they're tight and tight alright so before we do anything else we're going to review what we've done so it makes it nice and clear for you your test switch test switch wires to purple and brown purple and brown very simple scenario You've tied your blue wire in on your isolated socket and you've removed the jumper and you snapped it back in place. On this end, you've done the same thing. You, you've identified the red wire that is on the isolated socket on the opposite end. That red wire gets tied in together with the red wire and the white wire coming from the EMB driver. And, it, and we put a jumper in there, a white jumper to keep every, all the colors the same and tie that into the neutral along with the other three bulbs, which are on the opposite end 
tied into the neutral as well. The yellow wires coming from this end that are running these three bulbs get tied into your black side, which is your power side. So you have your black and your neutral because the three bulbs are being eliminated from any ballast, they're getting tied directly into 120. So you have to close the circuit. So you have one on one side, one on the other side. You have your constant power, which is gonna feed and charge the battery in your EMB driver. And it will acknowledge whether or not you've lost power to the facility at any point in time. And that will activate the DC power, which is the battery in the EMB driver backwards to the bulb. Now, last but not least, are the two white connectors that, that complete the circuit for the battery and allow the battery to be charged. That's the last thing you want to do because out of the box, the LED driver will have a charge. And if you put these together and you start to use, use the wires and touch the wires, you will get shot. And that just clips together. Now, before I put the bulbs in, make sure all this stuff is tied together, nice and clean. Of course, what you, what you would normally do is you would put the centerpiece back on. And this right here in a normal scenario will be a, there'll be a pop out inside the centerpiece. So before you wire this together, this comes with a nut that you have to take off. You'll feed the wires through and then you'll put this nut back on the back side of this and you'll wire this up to the centerpiece and it closes hole. the wires, the wire chase pretty much. Okay, and that'll come from one of the ends. You'll see, you see the knockouts in it. This, this light didn't have it set up, but that would be the knockout for it. So you would pop all this back in place. This would be, you wouldn't see all this because you would just see the, just see the test bulb. Tuck all these wires in. We're not gonna put them on entirely in here because we have a couple of these in place. But for right now, we'll just leave it just like that, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to begin to put the bulbs in and there's no specific order in how you put them in just gotta get them in you may have to push back on the socket a little bit to get them put in there you hear them clip down now when you turn these bulbs in place make sure that this is not showing down. That's pretty much the LED light strip inside the lamp. You want to make sure that's on the up the top side or the back side so you can't see it. And it doesn't matter which side you put the bulb in, it all works the same. You'll hear them click in place. Two more bulbs. Push back on the sock a little bit, down, lock in place. Okay, now your fixture's complete. So we put the centerpiece back in, uh, just to show you what it would look like after you put the centerpiece back in. And we've also uh, removed the wires and rewired it, so we're showing you the test light that you would normally see in a scenario where it's up in the ceiling, you'll see the lens on it, and any inspector will know that they can just look for the red test light to identify uh, an LED driver in one of the fixtures. So now this is back in place. We're gonna actually put the live hot live hots back on place, and for switching purposes, all four bulbs come on. Now, in order to test the fixture, and we know that we've isolated this one, uh, we've we've made it a different color bulb to actually point that out to you. So this is actually the bulb in this video showing that it's been isolated. When you press the button, you have to look very clear. You're not gonna see a whole lot of difference. You're gonna see what happens is, when this button is pushed, it's separating the AC and DC side and pushing DC, which is the battery, back to this bulb, so you'll see it dim. See how it just dimmed a little bit? I'll do it again. It dims down just a little bit. That's replicating what would be in a power down situation. These three bulbs would already be out. This one would be on just enough to give you some type of pathway to get out of the building. And that should be it. You show them how when it's shut down and then there's a loss of power to the building? Yep. So in a loss of power to the building, 
your, your button is normally, your switch circuit is normally off, you're out of the building. You can see the red light on. That means that the EMB driver is still getting power and the battery is being charged. When power is lost to the building, you will lose that light and automatically the battery, which is also the LED driver, will sense that you have no incoming power and will automatically switch to the DC side and illuminate that single bulb for you.